Hey everyone, today I want to go over an add-on I've been developing to try and bring industry standard grouping systems that programs like Maya have into Blender. Because right now Vanilla Blender has essentially no grouping system. Empties don't cut it, collections aren't groups, so this was really necessary. Um, just so we can cleanly organize our scenes and generate hierarchies that can be easily transferred between softwares. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is come and find our add-on here and set our hotkey. So by default, it will be Control Shift G. So let's run that. Control Shift G, and you can bring up all of your operators through this pie menu here. So what I'm going to do is group all of these objects, and you can see that we have parented all these objects to a new locator or empty, as Blender calls them. And under our redo panel, we have the location and rotation of this uh, empty. So this is basically the, the group's location. So by default, it's average center, but we can change this to world origin, active object, 3D cursor. Um, and we also have for the rotation, world space, active object, and 3D cursor. So if I wanted to spawn the locator on the active object and also inherit its rotation, I'd select these two settings here. Pretty straightforward. I'll just set this back to the default. And an important thing to note is that all of these operators, if I run the Pi menu under the with the mouse hovered over the outliner, we can actually um, run any of these operators over contents in the outliner. You'll find yourself actually organizing more in the outliner rather than in the 3D view, but it's nice to have both methods. Uh, so let's continue on to something a bit more complex. First things first, let's cover how we select groups. So in Vanilla Blender, we have under the select menu, more or less, select parent. Now this is by default square bracket, but I've remapped it to up arrow, but that will select up the chain, just like that. So if I wanna select the, the group node of this child object, up, and we can select that empty, just like in Maya. Another thing to mention just just to clear it up is these lines here are not part of the add-on. They're actually just a overlay under the uh, Blender overlays that you can turn on, on and off. I'm just leaving them on for demonstration purposes to make it clear what's parented to what. But let's continue on to the next operator here, the add to group operator. First, we select the objects we want to move to a new group. So we'll select these two objects, select the group, add to group, and these have been added. But what's great about this operator is that we don't actually have to directly select the group node. We can actually select the child of a group we want to add to because a lot of the time these locators or empties are obscured in your scene and hidden behind objects or really small and having to tediously find this um, group node to parent to is difficult. So if we can just select this child, we can add it to that group that way just to save us having to dig through our scene trying to find that operator. We can also add groups to other groups. So that has been added to the hierarchy there. The next operator we have is the remove from group operator. So if I select this group, remove from group, we can remove an entire group from the hierarchy. Or if we were to run it here, we could remove that chain from the hierarchy. Or just simple objects we can remove from groups. Next, we have the dissolve group operator. So if I wanted to dissolve this group, we'll dissolve it, and all the children of that group are parented to the parent of that group that we dissolved. We can also dissolve children, so everything down the chain of hierarchy is also dissolved. This is great for just cleaning up a whole lot of loose groups, unwanted groups in your scene. Next, we have the preview children toggle. So by default, it's left on. So whenever I select a group, we can see all the children highlighted that belong to that group. As you can see, it'll select all the children down that chain. If we turn that off, we just get the vanilla blender behavior, which isn't great because you don't know what objects belong to what group. And there's also 
another reason for this. So if I wanted to, as I do often, use the empty group as something to mirror across, if I have preview children on and I only want to mirror this object across, as soon as I select it, all the objects get selected and I can't just mirror that one object. So what we can do is toggle that off, mirror that object. Um, and another reason is to you know do things like set keyframes. If I wanna do individual actions, like set a keyframe just on this object, I would turn off preview children so maybe I want to do a model turntable, which wouldn't be possible with it turned on because if I keyframe this, all the objects are going to get keyframed. Um, so just keep that in mind. Next, we have group visibility. So this will hide all empties in our scene that have children. We can still see our relationship lines here, but if your scene is getting quite cluttered and you don't want to see your groups for whatever reason, you can easily hide them using that setting. Next, we have our group size. So I'm going to create, I'm going to create a group here. And we'll just move these objects down. And you can see that it's created a pretty large locator. And this may not be correct for this depending on the scale that you're working at. So if I was to create another group here, but instead turn this to something like 0.2, the empty that is created will be much smaller. So this is very scene determined, uh, dependent. So you can dial that in based on how large your model is. One last comment I wanna make is about exporting to other softwares. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, grouping is really important when you're transferring between softwares. Uh, and the only way for Blender to transfer into a software like Maya is you have to use these empty objects uh, as they will be recognized as groups when imported. And they will only be recognized as groups if you export out as an Alembic. If you export out as an FBX, they'll be brought in as locators into a program like Maya. So you tend to want to export out your hierarchy as an Alembic. And that basically summarizes Maya groups for Blender. If you think you'll get some use out of it, you can pick it up on my Blender Market page or my Gumroad. Thanks.